There is hope, there is help, there is healing, yeah, yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Rain of Praise today. Uh, hun, this week I'm doing lesson four of a, my financial fitness series. Yes. Now, uh, you know, I, I started out talking about a biblical, having a proper biblical perspective of finances. I, I talked about right and wrong thinking for finances. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked about giving. giving. That's right. And now I'm talking about walking in the blessings. Of God. Of God. Yes. Now, uh, of course, giving opens the door. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a biblical principle that God has put in place for his people to give and receive blessings. And uh, today I'm wrapping up this series. And, and, and I, I believe that if you will listen and take heart to what I have been saying yes. in these, in these, in these financial fitness. Do the natural things. The natural things yes. and the, the biblical Spirit things. Yes. That uh, you will walk in the blessings of God. That's and that's right. what we're talking about today, walking in the blessings of God. Yes. So here is lesson four of financial fitness. Now, this last lesson is called walking in the blessings of God. You know, I have noticed that there is a big difference in knowing something and walking in what you know. You know, for example, you know, you all know that one of my grandsons drives race cars. It's one thing to uh, watch him race that race car and to know about setting up that race car and getting it ready and, and actually there's a saying among the racing community, races are won in the shop, not on the track. And that means taking care of the car, setting it up and so forth. And you can know all that, but I'm gonna tell you what, it's an entirely different thing to get in that race car and get behind that wheel and go out on the track. How many understand what I'm saying to you? Y'all understand that? You know, you may know about giving you may know about finances, but it's another thing to do it and be involved with it. Now, 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, we see here that God, he wants us to have blessings. He wants us to walk in the blessing, his blessings in every area of our lives. He says so right here, that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, I, I quoted this earlier from John Wesley. It, this was his philosophy of walking in the blessings uh, of God. And uh, he, he said it this way. I get all I can, I save all I can, and I give all I can. That was his philosophy for walking in the blessings of God. Now, I want to talk about three areas today that will help you to walk in the blessings of God. To walk in the blessings of God, you must possess the harvest that God has for you. Now, Mark 4, Mark chapter 4, verse number 26 and I'm going to read this from the New King James and also from the Message Translation. All right, Mark 4, 26. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night, rise by day, and then the seed should sprout, grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields a crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now the message says it like this. Then Jesus said, God's kingdom is like seed thrown on a field by a man who then goes to bed and forgets about it. The seed sprouts and grows. He has no idea how it happens. The earth does all 
without his help. First a green stem of grass, then the bud, then the ripened grain. When the grain is fully formed, he reaps harvest time. Now this, this verse is showing us the principles of reaping or possessing the harvest that God has for us. And this includes finances, okay? Now, not only do we need to believe God for seed to sow, but we should also believe God to reap the harvest. Notice who it was that reaped the harvest. It says here, the man put the sickle. Or in other words, he went out and he cut the grain or harvested. In this day and age, we would say that they took the combine and they went through the field and harvested. You know, back then they had a hand, they did it by hand, whether they call it a sickle. Anybody ever seen one of those? Few of us have. You know, God brings the harvest, but you must possess it by faith. Now, I want to use a threefold, I believe, back biblical strategy for your harvest. And, but this only works for givers. All right? Claim the amount you need, your harvest, in other words, and don't pray about it, but to continue to stand in faith, thanking God that it's coming to pass. And of course, we're going to go to Mark eleven twenty four, 24, and you already know what that says. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Okay. Now, secondly, first you believe for that harvest. Secondly, you bind every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus from stealing and killing and destroying your harvest. John 10, 10. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. All right. A, a farmer, he makes sure that his crop is protected from disease and all kinds of things. If there's not enough water coming down from the sky, then he, he has to irrigate. He has to bring water. He has to make sure that, uh, that, that all the uh, pests or in, insects or whatever that would eat up the harvest. I know my grandpa was always, with his cotton, he was always concerned about Mr. Bow Weevil because if, he got, if Mr. Bow Weevil got in a field of cotton, you in trouble because it, uh, it don't take very long for it to take over the whole field. You got to, you got to, to do the things necessary to prevent that. Now, thirdly, the third thing you have to do is loose the angels to cause the harvest to come to you. Hebrews 1 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Now, this is the threefold strategy to obtain finances using your spiritual authority. Now, unless you learn to use your spiritual authority in the area of finances, you will not prosper uh, financially to the degree that God wants you to. You know? Now, see, the three steps, three spiritual steps are these. Now, I know that uh, dad would, would say, and, and I picked it up from him, and I think my kids have picked it up, and others have picked it, have traveled with him, picked him up. He would always say, he would pray about his harvest on his finances, what he was giving, and he would say, ministering spirits, Goes and go and cause the finances to come. How many of you ever heard him say that? I know some of you have heard him say that. And, and, and that's an important part of this is to put the, put the ministering spirits out there. See, now, 
That's the spiritual side, okay? You got the spirit. Now there are some natural things that you have to do. See, once you've done the spiritual things, then you get busy doing the natural things. Now the problem is that many people get involved with the spiritual part of giving, but they never do anything about the natural part. Come on now. It says God will bless what you set your hand to. Now some people's prosperity and some people's harvest will come through the job that God has given them. Through advancements, raises, bonuses, all kinds of different things. See, the bottom line is this. In order to prosper God's way, you have to do some things in the spiritual and then you must do what you need to do in the natural. All right? Now, I am going to talk about the natural part because most of you have heard all of them people talking to you about the spirit. Give and it shall be given. And all they go on, all of the deal, and so forth and so on. And there are many people that are giving but they are still in a mess financially. And they say, well, I'm believing God. And they say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God for this. And I, I sent the ministering spirits out, but I'm still on the bottom of the barrel, really, or maybe under the barrel. You know, anybody ever felt like that financially? You know, you just wasn't scraping bottom. You was under the bottom trying to, you was uh, scratching the bottom of, <laughs> you was so far down. But the problem is that as people talk about prosperity and finances, they never talk to the people about their responsibility in the natural. Oh, and y'all are quiet now because you got to do something. Oh, I want God to do it all. Well, God can only do his part when you do your part. So to walk in the blessings of God, you must wisely manage the harvest that God gives you. Now, what is savings? It is positive management action that helps you to prepare for tomorrow. They say that a, there is only a small percentage of people, if you go check, that have any type of savings account or in any type of investments. And the reason that most people, and I'll, I'll say I'm a little ahead of myself, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. The reason most people don't have any investments is because, well, I don't have a bunch to invest. Neither did the guy that's got a bunch when he started. You have to start with what you have, whether it's small or large, okay? Now, let's, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 22, 3. And I'm going to read this from New King James, the NLT, and the message. Okay? Proverbs 23, 3. Proverbs 23, 3. Now, I'm just teaching, just doing some good, this is good pastoral teaching. And if you get a hold of what I've been teaching you, it'll work for you. A, okay, 22.3. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but a simple, but the simple pass on and are punished. The NLT says it like this. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precaution. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. The Message Bible says a prudent per per person sees trouble coming and ducks. A simpleton, a simpleton walks in blindly and is clobbered. <laughs> Actually, savings is the way you pay yourself. Savings is the financial margin you need. 
savings will safeguard your possession and your investments. So if we're going to manage what God gives us wisely so we'll have more to give, number one, we need to have some type of savings. Years and years ago, I did a deal where we, I said at the ministry, save 80%, uh, save 80% and run the ministry on 20%. I got it back. Hey, yeah. Run the ministry on 80% and try to save 20%. And, uh, yeah, I got it backwards. Thank you, hon. I'm, I'm thinking too far ahead now. Now, have we ever, have, have we been able to do that? No, but it, it's a goal that we set. And, and because you realize that a ministry back then, we didn't have the church. We're, we run all, simply on gifts and we still do. And you never know how how much is going to come out. In, in a business, pretty well can figure out how much is going to come in each month. But a church has, has I mean, I don't know how much offerings y'all going to give each week. But you know what? The bills remain the same whether we get a big offering or a small offering. So, and this is what you need to have. Part of that savings that you put back is to help you whenever you come up short, you can reach back over and get a little bit of that and use it and then, then re, re, re put it in there. You know, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? See, you can give all you want to, but if you don't manage your finances correctly, you're still going to be scraping the bottom. And this is the problem that I have with some of these people is they talk about prosperity, but all they ever talk about is give it and you can get it and you get it and you get it. Well, hey, once you get it, how do you, are you managing it properly? If you don't manage it properly, you're going to be, you're going to be broke all the time. See, to walk in the blessings, you got to know how to manage finances which is the natural part of walking in the blessings that God. Now, I want to talk about another area of financial fitness that we have to deal with. And of course, we're going to deal with this side. Walking in God's blessing, you must distribute a portion of your harvest as the Lord directs. Okay, we already know that if we're supposed to give 10%, that's the tithe. Now, we need to realize that in 1 Timothy 6, 17, 18, and 19, I'm going to read it from the message because it says, tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves, so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Tell them to go after God who piles on riches. We could ever man all the riches we could ever manage to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they will build a treasury that will last and gain and gaining life. Now, here, I'm not talking about millionaires and billionaires. I'm talking about people that God has given a full supply to. You need to give. Become a distributor or a giver. You know, it says be extravagant. Now, that doesn't mean go off the deep end. But you see, there's a lot more to giving, to receiving blessings from God than just giving in the offering plate. Now we need that. We have to have it if we're going to keep the church open. Okay? But there's such a thing as seeing somebody at a restaurant and buying their meal. That's another area of giving. Another area is when you know that someone is in need and you shake their hand and leave money in their hand. That's another way of, of giving of, uh, of your 
harvest. Hello. See, when you are a distributor or a giver on one hand, you receive the blessings of God. On the other hand, you give blessings away. And thereby becoming a pipeline, God's giving it to you. You're managing it properly. You got yourself in good financial position and you're passing it on. There's a saying as it goes, if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. The problem is that the reason that some people are not receiving is because I, anymore is because once they got it, it stopped there. It didn't have no outflow. Let me, let me, let me wrap this up. In a nutshell, what have I talked about this morning? In a nutshell, let's go back. Possess the harvest that God gives you. Wisely manage that the harvest that God has given you and distribute or give a portion of the harvest that God gives you. I really believe if you'll get a hold of the principles that I was talking about in financial fitness. Now, I, I spoke this at the church mm -hmm. just a few weeks ago. Yes. And I don't know how many people have come up to me and, and said, man, it has really, really changed and helped them. Yes. It will help you. Now, if you happen to have been uh, watching today and you didn't see all of the others or you missed one of them, hey, you can go to rhema.org and you can access all the rhema all praises there. They're archived there for you. For you. Uh, the Our Word of Faith magazine is there yes. online, or you can download it. You can even listen to the radio, radio podcast. Mm -hmm. all, all these things are, are accessed there. And so if you just go to rhema.org, uh, all the information is there. All the information there and for you. You know, honey, I was just thinking, um, and I just want to give this little tip, because uh, we're talking about giving and obeying yeah. what the Word says. Well, I'll tell you what, the enemy will try to talk to you and That's will try right. to tell you, hey, that, that doesn't work. You don't yeah. have to tithe. You don't have to give offerings. Right. But you know the testimony that we had. Right. I mean, of course, first of all, we were taught to tithe. We were taught from to kids. give from kids. Yeah. yeah. And so we knew that that principle worked. Right. But then in our early life, I mean, when we're counting pennies, um, all of a sudden, because I do the budget, I've always done the budget, all of a sudden one month I said, honey, we've got more going out this month than we've got coming in. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to think, okay, how, how are we going to do this? Well, you know, as I'm trying to solve that, you know who came to me, right. the enemy. And he said, well, you know, you could uh, not pay your tithes this month, and but you would make catch it up. up. You'd catch up next, next month. month. And you know what? For a minute, I mean, as much as I knew that principle, for just a minute, I entertained that. Right. Well, but the second thing I thought, uh-uh, get behind me, Satan. I'm not going to do <laughs> not that. Not going there. Not, not going, going there. there. And so I got so mad at him. I said, I want to tell you what, because I was writing out checks. I said, that's the first check that I'm going to write out right. as my tithe check. And so as I wrote that out, I said to God, I said, okay, God, I have done what you said. I have placed you first. Right. I have, you know, given my tithes. Right. I said, now I expect you, as you said in the word, that you would supply all of our needs right. according to your riches and glory. And to this day, we don't know how it happened. Every time I would, a bill would come in, I would write the check. I'd still have money in my account. By the end of the month, I had written every bill, still had $5 left in my account. Right. <laughs> but you know, God. I want to tell you what I learned from that. Well, first of all, I, I learned not to, not to entertain what the enemy says. Right. But this, I mean, that has been, that was in 1966. Six. Yeah, 1966. From that day. That was in the, the spring of the year, 1966. Yeah. From that day to this. 
and it's been almost 50 years, right? The first check that I write when we get our, uh, our um, pay, monthly, pay, monthly yeah. pay, that is the first check I write every month. And I will tell you what, a testimony that God has always supplied all of our needs right. and abundance as well. Hey, you know, talking about the finances, uh, this is the last week for this special financial yes. offer. Obe obedience in finances, how God taught me about prosperity, biblical keys to prosper uh, financial prosperity by dad in my book, Overflow, Living yes. Above Life's Limits. Uh, it's all there. Mm -hmm. It's here for you. The announcer is going to tell you all about it. You can see how to, you get all of that right now. So, you know, it, it's. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I enjoyed teaching yes. it very, very much. And I, I, I taught it because... I, I grew up with these, these principles. Yes. I learned to, to work these principles. Yes. You know, some people, they're just on the spiritual side over here with, the, with finances. Mm -hmm. And some people are just on the natural side with finances. That's right. No, it's both. That's it's both. Right. And I have a saying, the supernatural and the natural working together make, make an explosive, explosive force, force for God. God. Yes. So I trust you get a hold of that. Hey, I want to thank all of you who are Partner Club members that send an offering every month to help this broadcast go all over the world. Uh, you are making a difference in people's lives. As we travel, you are making a difference in people's lives. Yes. So I want you to know that. And if you happen to say, well, how could I become a work partner? Well, you can go to rhema.org slash WBC yes. and become and help us to continue to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Prosperity. Many people in the body of Christ believe that prosperity is part of their inheritance. Others believe that prosperity is a delusion sent by the evil one. But what does the Bible say about prosperity? This month from Kenneth Hagin Ministries, four informational and inspiring books. The package includes three powerful books by Kenneth E. Hagin. First, Biblical Keys to Financial Prosperity. This book explains how believers can release their faith for finances and eat the good of the land. And too many books, Obedience in Finances and How God Taught Me About Prosperity. Also in this package is Kenneth W. Hagin's hope building book, Overflow, Living Above Life's Limits. This book teaches you how to move beyond natural limits and enjoy a life overflowing with God's blessings. Four great books for only $19.95. Call right now, 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to rhema.org. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.